Welcome back to the Music Industry Podcast. Today we have Lisa Young in with us from AWOL. She is Audience Development Manager and has worked with the likes of Lauv, Yumi at Six, Jungle and Nick Cave. Big Welcome names. to the podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what an Audience Development Manager does on their day-to-day -day role? Yeah, sure. So it depends. Um, at AWOL, sometimes we have like a deal with an artist that's literally for one album campaign. Like for more established artists like Jungle, we are working for this album. Mm -hmm. And it's all, everything is about the release, like the singles and yeah, leading to the album basically. But the more up and coming artists, and there are a lot of projects that are focused on artist development. Mm -hmm. So um, we actually, at the beginning, it's not so much about the release strategy, but also about branding and actually like raising awareness for the mm -hmm. artists in general and uh, making sure that they are reaching a bigger audience and that we're building the audience basically from the ground up and based on their interests, based on their um, talent and skills and yeah, based on their creative vision as well. Mm. Do you find it's different for an established artist compared to an emerging artist for the strategies? Um, yes, it is very much different. Um, it really depends what uh, stage of the career an artist is in. For mm -hmm. an up and coming artist, yeah, as, as I said, we're doing a lot of like branding, we're building everything from the ground up. Um, we have a lot of like young artists. So I work with artists like Millie Turner and Phoebe Axa, who are like 20, 21. Mm -hmm. And they have been making music for years, but um, they've not had a record deal before. So okay. basically, we're showing them like the ropes. We're um, we're actually working on like creative direction with them, uh, a branding, positioning, vision, um, just but all natural to the artists, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. Just we're working very closely with the artists on that, and then we get some established artists, um, let's say Jungle or Tomish, who probably already have a, a vision in their head and just mm -hmm. need like a, a reliable partner to um, execute that vision. Mm -hmm. So then we have a lot more. Um, existing things that we can work with and the team is also much bigger. Sometimes I only work with uh, one artist manager and sometimes it's like a whole management team mm -hmm. behind them. So, so when you say uh, with the development artists you're working on branding and obviously it has to be natural to the artist. How does that work? Do you sit down with them and say like what do you want to get across or um, as you're the expert do you say you know what we're seeing this in your content we're seeing this in your music we think your brand should go in this direction. How does it work? I always try and get them to make the advice to us in mm. a way like um, so whenever I start working with an artist um, um, I let them fill in like an artist questionnaire mm. that answers everything like all the interests everything that they're about basically and also what kind of goals and visions they they have already but sometimes they might not be that well thought out so then we have a brainstorm meeting together um, first internally and uh, then with the artist together and then we present some ideas based on the artist questionnaire what we could do with the artist and um, either they like it um, sometimes they don't like it that's that's totally fine as well because um, we are very artist first company so um, yeah, I think that's actually the most interesting thing to work with really like up and coming artists and building everything from the ground up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that's one of the exci most exciting things in my job, actually, mm. um, just to see, like to find out what the artist is all about, to get to know them better, to actually work very closely with them and get access to them. And yeah and mm. actually work on a strategy. At the moment, yeah. is there a, a certain trend where certain artists are prioritizing platforms? Like is like TikTok really hot right now? Is Instagram really hot? What are, what are they all coming to you asking for? It's a lot about TikTok right now. <laughs> yeah. Everyone is yeah. talking about TikTok. Um, obviously, yeah, it's become such an important tool, especially to reach um, Gen Z, mm -hmm. like the um, 14 to 24 year olds that you that are so important to you. They might not be the ones that buy the most like um, stuff from you, but they are actually, their influence on their peers online is immense. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, TikTok actually is, is great because um, it has like an algorithm where even like, if even if you're a complete like unknown, you can suddenly get like trending mm -hmm. on, on the platform. And um, it can be super overwhelming for artists and a lot of artists are struggling at the beginning but when they see that it actually reaches a lot more people than on Instagram when they start out, 
they are actually getting very motivated to to post on the platform more. Mm. Are you trying to get the song to go viral, or are you trying to get most of the artists to to post themselves <laughs> and create content? I mean, ideally, um, the song would would go viral on TikTok, but mm. it's not something obviously that you can enforce in any kind of way. Um, we have been lucky, and uh, that that some songs by artists went viral, but it could be like complete like catalog releases, like yeah. uh, releases from years ago that mm. suddenly come up and go trending on TikTok again. For example, I'm, I'm working with the Wombats and oh, yeah. a remix of their old track, Greek Tragedy, which was from an album that wasn't even released by it was suddenly went viral, mm -hmm. but it led to a spike in like followers on all the other channels as well. So um, it's very unpredictable. And How did it all start yeah. for the Wombats then? Did it just yeah. like just happen and, and that's it? Or was it like one particular video that kicked things off? Um, so... The, the remix um, was, I think it started on TikTok, actually. Someone put mm. that remix on TikTok and it wasn't even released as a single. Yeah. And uh, people kept dancing to it and um, doing mm. videos to Not it. Not a and, big DJ or anything, just and no, um, just it, an emerging DJ. Um, it was just like... Um, picked up by a lot of people, not really influencers, and then suddenly it reached um, the group of influencers. And then at some point, like the most popular TikTok creator, Charlie D'Amelio, she mm -hmm. used the video. And then obviously it caused a complete stir. And then the band actually released the track um, on streaming platforms as well. So the band actually like jumped onto TikTok as soon as it starts, that went viral. What did they start creating? Did they just start just posting themselves or did they do like covers or renditions um, of that song so i believe they might have had a tiktok profile before but um it was more like not themselves like actually putting out content for it but mm. then they started like um putting out content for it um actually the the singer started like interacting with uh with the fans on there and videos that they did to that remix and um also um there was a compilation of remix videos was actually released on on tiktok and um, another band member reacted to to videos like yeah mm. so there was a lot of stuff going it's on like a perfect example of fan activation isn't yeah. it mm -hmm. um yeah. that's a couple topic we really wanted to talk to you about because yeah. i think a lot of people when they think about marketing they're like new audience constantly so um fan activation for anyone that actually doesn't know because it's a bit of a buzzword in the industry at the moment isn't it um it's basically talking about getting your existing fan base and getting them to actually engage with you and sort of, I think it's an effective way of marketing because they talk as well. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think fan activation is just as important as like reaching that new audience? More important maybe? Yeah, I mean, my role is audience development. So that means existing audiences yeah. and also um, obviously new audiences and both is very, very important. Mm. Um, obviously, one focus should always be to increase the fan base and to get the music into places where people hadn't listened to it yet but obviously you also always have to do things to to uh, to warm up existing fans and to actually to um, because they are your super fans you don't want to lose them by being inactive on social media mm -hmm. and um, yeah so it's definitely both are equally important yeah. I would say. is that the best way you think to engage with the existing audience on social media yes so there are different ways to do it um, mm -hmm. it depends from artist to artist, but Nick Cave, for example, he has an email newsletter that he releases every week where he speaks to fans, and that's his like that's main cool. channel yeah. of communication, yeah. and he loves that. Mm -hmm. And um, and it works it, well. Yeah, it works well for him. Like it's literally like he he picks like a question or two, and he answers them in written word um, in a newsletter. Interesting. I've never heard yeah. about that before. And he's doing it himself, and it has like. <laughs> Thousands of people are subscribers and opening it every week, mm -hmm. and that's just his preferred way to do it. And he even took it live at some point and did this, um, did these shows around it where he would take questions from the audience and answer them live, that's and also cool. perform a few songs. So mm. it became a whole like thing. So. What kind of topics? Can you think of any off the top of your head? Like, or is it like <laughs> questions from fans saying like, "What do you have for breakfast?" Or was it, <laughs> is it more like political kind of stuff? Like. Where does he go with it? I would say most of the questions are about his music okay. and uh, what he's been doing. I mean, his catalog is so like full of um, music and also lyrics, lyrical content and mm. the meaning behind songs. And obviously he has had some life experiences that really shaped him. And uh, yeah, that kind of stuff or what gear he uses or um, mm -hmm. what he thinks about a certain poem um, or something that he has mentioned in an interview. But also like... 
yeah, what, what's your favorite breakfast? I mean, <laughs> it could be as simple as that. And um, he chooses the questions and they can be completely random and they can be like um, very, very deep. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's like, I would say two pages long, like the answer. And sometimes right. it's just two sentences. So that will yeah. be so nice for our audience to hear, I think. Yeah, uh, I think uh, a lot of artists put pressure on themselves to be on TikTok. So mm -hmm. creating like, they, they think, oh, I have to do a dance routine or I have mm -hmm. to go live on Instagram and do covers. So something like that is so different and shows mm -hmm. that you can always engage with your existing fan base, mm -hmm. which Especially is amazing. For, for us too, where we're like TikTok, Instagram, yeah. YouTube, mm -hmm. and that's our thing. But there is so much more out there that artists mm -hmm. can do. What I love about that is it like keeps the story and what it's all about mm -hmm. for him as well, because yeah. What was that album? It was either Selena Gomez or Ariana Grande where you said like you, you once you found out what that album was about, you absolutely loved it and mm. you went into that frame of mind, was it? I think it was one of Selena Gomez's songs. Selena she did a Gomez. genius, um, you know, they do. Where they oh, that sing. was it, yeah. Yeah, and it was actually rare and she explained like behind the lyrics what it meant and this is like a perfect example of like an artist doing that but with like their life as well so mm -hmm. the the songs probably come alive a lot more mm -hmm. um do you yourself do any fan activation campaigns at a wall or is it more you let the artists engage with their audience personally uh no it's mostly a team effort okay like mm -hmm. i sit down with the artist or the management and we think up some strategies especially mm -hmm. around singles and albums mm -hmm. um most recent example is i've worked with daddy freya mm -hmm. the eurovision um contestant from iceland yeah and uh, that was actually great because um he and his manager we worked with them super closely like we have weekly calls and we were um he was up for doing so much stuff it was actually perfect situation mm -hmm. literally where um, he had his own vision and um, we got to know him um, quite well just from talking to him about stuff but and and he's so like tech savvy as well like he built his own like discord community he had a whole like video game around like a single release and uh, this is uh, daddy makes music right? yes That's exactly right. yeah, yeah. So and he's got like big yeah. dance routines and things like that which... yes his track went viral on tiktok when yes. it was first released and yeah as well that as well, um, it was helped by some like celebrities like James Corden and Pink posting about it on Twitter. So mm -hmm. that's uh, what made the song from 2020 actually go viral. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was um, a good example of how we can work together on fan activations because he already had uh, like a fan base um, and we could split them up into two different groups. Um, the first fan base was already there before Eurovision. Mm -hmm. So that was like people who were like generally interested in his music and had been following him for years. And then there was the new group, like Eurovision fans who really enjoyed his music. But because of those Eurovision songs, they also got into the other songs. Mm -hmm. So um, that was very interesting because you had to find activations to, to satisfy both mm -hmm. um, groups of people. And yeah, we sent out newsletters. Um, he is regularly... Um, talking on social media to his fans and um, he did like twitter live q a's reddit chats all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff to talk to his fans and um like live streams um on youtube um which which was amazing and we also did like this uh virtual reality activation with him we sent right. him on a virtual world tour which would basically end um in rotterdam um for eurovision and we worked on that with Landmark, which is a VR company. Had, yeah, we had him yeah. on the podcast. Oh, oh really? Yeah. That's oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, no, um, we've worked with them before on a love project, but this was different. We actually, we built a whole like hologram, like um, Daddy recorded a hologram of himself in front of a green screen. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, um, that um, so a performance was ingested into um, the Landmark app. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we sent him on tour around the world. So fans from countries all around the world could unlock uh, the performance at a certain date. And then on Eurovision date, it would be open for the whole world. Mm -hmm. And obviously that was um, something where we had the existing fans in mind that were around the world, but also some fans who would just discover him um, as the bus around Eurovision continued. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we actually, we also made sure that the data collection work like that people signed up with their email address or their spotify and mm -hmm. we had like um ctas um for the single and the video on there as well so people who were checking out the world tour could also watch the video and mm -hmm listen to more music and stuff so it's interesting Creative. so yeah. kind of what you're saying is if you focus on your own fans then you end up kind of getting new fans mm -hmm. from it because people start to talk about you and share it and say have you tried this yeah virtual 
reality <laughs> thing. Is that is that basically what you found that the fan base actually grew despite yeah. it being targeting the existing? There's definitely a lot of word of mouth. And yeah. also, if you have an existing community like Daddy has a Discord community, when uh, when he told us about it, there were like three hundred members, and now there are over ten thousand in it. Uh -huh. Like just after Eurovision, obviously, he got a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. But he's always been keen to to build like a space to talk to his fans. Mm -hmm. Um, it was um in a Facebook group that's also very active, and on Discord, and he would pop in both, mm -hmm. pop into both mm -hmm. sometimes. He and mentioned Reddit as well. So yeah, did he? Does he go live on Reddit? Um, so he has a Reddit profile. He mm -hmm. um, he is active on there, and yeah, we secured some like ask me anything. Um, that's mm -hmm. part of my job, like talking to digital partners about like what can we do to um, enhance our campaigns a little more. I've always been interested in the, how, what goes behind the AMAs on Reddit. Do you have to go through a moderator and then say kind of this is the time we want to go live, and this is kind of a bit of a pitch to them, or is it the usual Reddit where you just post the AMA? What what happens there? Um, no, if you want an AMA in a channel like music, which is one of the biggest channels, mm -hmm. or indie, for example, um, you you do reach out to a moderator. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes um, you can try and facilitate it via your PR company. Mm -hmm. Or um, in that case, I reached out to a moderator of the music group. And because Dali had done one the year before, which was secured by the PR mm -hmm. agency, um, um, they knew of him already. and because he's quite active on Reddit himself, um, mm -hmm. someone got back to me and offered me a few slots and then, Excellent. yeah, we secured mm -hmm. one. I mean, I think a lot of fan activation we've spoken about is with larger artists that already have quite a big community. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's uh, doable or do you think they should even be focusing on this if your audience isn't as big? So say you've only got a thousand followers on Instagram, do you still think you should be doing a lot of fan activation or should your main focus be on reaching that new audience? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you have thousand fans and let's say 300 of them are very engaged, mm -hmm. you need to keep those fans. Otherwise, there's there's so much competition out there right now that why would they like stick with you if, if they could like if another artist offers them more entertainment or some something. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's definitely stuff um, you should do. But also, I, I realize that puts a lot of pressure on the artist because um, I mean, especially when you start out as an up-and-coming artist, you might have another job. You might mm, not be doing sure. like music full time, so it can be extremely time-consuming to to do social media. And um, obviously, it's great. Maybe every week at like eight p.m. or so, it's like, oh, I'm doing a live stream. I'm doing a Q and A and stuff, and I'm collecting questions the day before. That's the way to keep engaged with your fans, or yeah, like do like um, um during the pandemic, a lot of artists did like a Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, Q&A basically with fans and stuff and they did it maybe every month or so or in your newsletter if you're not so much of a social media person you can give them like um, a snippet of a new track to listen to if, mm. if they sign up to that mm. it's just also you, you will quickly find out as an artist what the medium is that you like the most but mm. also where most of your fans are so mm. The also, the vibe I'm getting is that it's very much the artist has to do it now. Whereas mm -hmm. 20 years ago, it was like, just handle my PR company and they would get yeah. me in magazines and they'll put my, mm -hmm. my music video onto MTV, etc. And now you're basically saying the artist has to do it. We can advise you, but with, you're not going to have a team that does it all for you and schedules your posts and things like that. Is that the case? I mean, there are definitely artists who have social media teams. Um, mm. But I mean, fans are clever. They yeah. they find out at some mm -hmm. point if it's the yeah. artist who's posting, mm -hmm. and or if it's not. And there is, um, I think it's good to have um, some posts being done by a social media agency, for example. That uh, like some of the promotional posts or regular posts. Um, that that's completely fine. But there should also be videos of the band talking directly to mm -hmm. the fans or like those live Q&As. Mm -hmm. It has to be with the band and also TikTok content. It won't perform that well if, if the band or the artist is not in it. Yeah. So yes, it there's a lot more that's being required from artists, but also um, that's just because there's such an abundance in music and artists right now. So you kind of have to stand out. And I think it's really hard times actually to, to be an artist nowadays. So, mm. so much um, competition. There's mm. so much competition and I still find it so impressive that there are still so many artists um, who are doing it. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And obviously during the pandemic, we had a lot of artists who were very frustrated um, 
about not being able to tour because a lot of them they f really feed off their energy from mm. like uh, from gigs and mm. and if they're not really like social media people they really had to be on like social media and do virtual gigs with no real applause and stuff mm -hmm. it's it's very hard um but then some artists were also particularly creative during that time and just released a lot of songs so mm -hmm. do you think it's possible to not be on social media and still succeed so you're saying nick cave had a newsletter but he also had to be on social media mm -hmm. do you think do you have to be on all platforms now just at least sharing content occasionally or do you think you can get away with just never posting on it i wouldn't know really how i mean maybe in certain music scenes it, yeah. it it could work like hip hop community is a lot like where people are being discovered on SoundCloud mm -hmm. or via music blogs like mm -hmm. pigeons and planes and stuff. Um, if you get a review in one of those magazines and I mean, some people like it if an artist is a bit more mysterious because that's also True. like that draws attention to them in a way. But at some point, um, once maybe they can keep it really secret at the beginning, um, but at some point, I think it is important to to join social media because you can make new fans at the beginning, but you have to keep it up. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I mean, yeah, you can be elusive and stuff, but even the most elusive artists at some point, they have at least one social media channel. So mm -hmm. obviously not all of them speak to fans all the time on them. And you can see that, oh, it's probably run by the label or it's run mm. by a social media agency. You're also the second guest to mention Discord yeah. in the space <laughs> of a week, yeah. two weeks. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> and so obviously it's it's taking off. And to be honest, I don't know anything about Discord now, but I know what it is. Mm -hmm. But how is it really being used? What happens in those Discord servers or channels? What gets discussed? Is it fans talking to each other or is it the artist talking to fans or what what really happens in the discords so yeah that's very interesting because at the beginning i also had no idea what it is so mm -hmm. i had to do my own research and it's apparently very popular among gamers yeah mm -hmm. um so they use it to actually play games together live on the platform similar to twitch mm -hmm. and to basically just just chat while you're playing games but um they really wanted to open up um that platform to um like music fans or other like sectors and um it's actually it's great because um, at the beginning, I think in order to build the community, the artist definitely has to pop in and like maybe share some news there that they haven't shared on other platforms or um, just set a time every week. Oh, I'm going to chat to my fans on Discord. You can do it via text chat, but there's also um, a video fe feature, for example. Right. And uh, but the more a group grows and I can only speak um, of the Daddy Freya group, for example, mm -hmm. um, the artist can assign moderators um, who right. also set up specific topic channels um, for other stuff. It could not just be the artist's music. It could also be off topic or um, I don't know, um, other things that people like to talk about, like gaming, for example. A lot of Daddy's fans are gamers and they are not just talking about the video game that Daddy created, but also other video games. So. He created a video game. Sorry? Yeah, she mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. He created a video oh, game as well. I missed yeah. that. Yeah. 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 They said he was so tech savvy and I yeah. didn't expect him to yeah, make an actual video game. Yeah. 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 That's insane. So that's literally what, um, yeah. So a lot of like different topic channels that are being created by moderators that the artist assigned. And, um, sort of like Facebook groups yeah. as well. So they have moderators on it. Yeah. So now it has taken on a life of its own. Yeah. And the fans have are actually like going in without without knowing that the artist will be there and it's not the main focus anymore they want to speak to other fans mm. they've become online friends with them and mm. they're like oh i feel like i'm in such a safe space i've made new friends mm. and also like oh if if gigs are happening again we can i can meet with those people in person and stuff yeah. so it's actually it's amazing for creating communities yeah. and it's basically the modern version of a facebook group i would say yeah i think awesome. that's a great yeah. place to end it yeah there's definitely. some really cool gems in there that i don't <laughs> yeah. think anyone's spoken about yeah. on any of our podcasts before <laughs> Uh, where people, can people find you online? Instagram, Twitter? Uh, yeah, it's just Lisa Young in mm -hmm. on Instagram and Twitter and um, yeah, LinkedIn, Facebook. Cool. I don't know. <laughs> we'll yeah. put it in the description of the okay. video. But um, awesome. yeah, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.